this video, we're going to focus on the background of your scientific investigation. Now, the background shouldn't be pushing too long, three, four pages. Don't do that. Usually, when it comes to a background, we're talking about three to four paragraphs. More than four, that means you're talking irrelevant content, and most likely, you might get points down. Because again, too much content, it just means that you're talking information that is not necessarily needed. So then what exactly is that you need to talk in the background? Scientific behind the lab experiment. What do I mean by the scientific formation? Let's just say you decided to do a lab report about enzymes. Obviously, your first paragraph will be about enzymes. In general, the content that you learn about enzymes, they be a protein, they be a catalyst, they can be affected by temperature, pHs, that means you're talking in generalized what an enzyme is. What would be the second paragraph? The second paragraph would be about the enzyme that you chose to work on and talk about more. If it's a pill, talk about that pill, you know, that medicine, what does it do? And then, of course, talk about that pill is going to be affecting something. So let's say you're using that pill in the milk. Then most likely your third paragraph will be about talking about the milk, the composition of the milk, what is it for? And then the fourth one, if there was... If you want to push it to the fourth, it will be about the equipment that you're using, why you're doing this experiment, why is this experiment important, and of course, that's like your personal engagement telling me exactly what is the purpose of your lab, how you're going to do lab, but that's very briefly. Now, you can add that to the third paragraph, but if you want to have the fourth one where you just tell me why you're doing the experiment, what exactly is the experiment, like very generally tell me what is, the, what is this whole lab about and what exactly you're trying to get in the, out of it then that will be your four paragraphs. So I will say if you go beyond a page and a half, if you go beyond that, you're talking too much. You should go straight to the point. Now, all the information must be paraphrased or quoted, but do not make like a massive quote because you also get points off for putting too many massive quotes. Don't do that. And they have to be cited by using in-text citations. Remember, it's not your information you picked up from somebody else. So I will say in every single sentence that you're putting on background, there has to be. Now, if the entire background is about one citation, obviously you can write the entire paragraph and then put that citation. But the in-text citations must be there, otherwise you're going to lose points. So just remember that the last paragraph, it's about the purpose of your lab. What is your lab about? What are you doing? What do you want to get out of it? Make sure that is in your last paragraph. Now, when it comes to in-text citations... EasyBib is the guy. See, if you don't want to go through writing the whole thing, the, the, the whole section of the reference, or how to put a text citation, just go to EasyBib. You, if you plug it in, the link in there, you probably will get the entire reference, and then you can use it in your texts, in your whatever paragraphs. Now, be careful. You have to find reliable sources. In this case, we got org, net, edu, and gov. These are reliable sources. However, .com, which... It makes it easy to read, right? But you got to be very careful because some of them are not reliable. So make sure that while you're reading it, who's the author? What is his background? To make sure that this information is actually reliable. So whenever you're going to choose. So with that, let's look at two backgrounds that I put it up here. One is a background of a kid who got a three and another background is a somebody that got a seven. Just for you to see the taste of the difference between them. So here, this is background. The kid is talking about the plant. So he, the plant needs the factors in order to grow. And there's some environmental change that depend on the other plants. Some plants grow better in humidity and other climates, while some thrive in cold air. In the case of pH level, it differs as well. Some plants are able to live on more extremes, while some are 4 and 11. Most plants on the other grows in better, faster, neutral pH. You can see that there's a lot of blah, blah, blah going on. In one sentence, you can say, plants are affected by different factors. One of them is a pH, and different pHs can cause different results on the plant. Boom! Don't need to go this big. You're wasting your time. In the case of Mephia, and look, this is the scientific name, but it's not in italics. We're already getting points off because you didn't put in italics. Again, you have another plant here, which is not in italics. It has to be there. I found all around the world, most thrive on the less extreme pH. By looking at how the pH levels affect the growth of these two species, I'm able to gain better understanding about the effects of pH on most plants. Barely talked about the plant structure. Barely talked about how these pHs are important for the chemistry of that plant. Moving on. In 11th grade, it's by the way, it's the same background. In 11th grade, I went to a trip 
with my classmates called the Group 4 Project, which mandatory for the IB. For the first trip, we traveled to Raza Kaima, where we looked at many different plants. All of this information is irrelevant. He's just telling me the whole process, why he chose this lab, which it's an entire paragraph. You're wasting words in here, okay? He also says here, these two plants are known for a very quick germination period, which allows me to gain knowledge of the effect of pH in a short period of time. By using com common household items like baking soda and ammonia to create a solution, it allows me... So he's very gentle. Like, you need if you're going to use baking soda and ammonia, explain more about, about them and how they give a certain pH. It was very brief on this one, explained. And then here, in the experiment, I'm trying to answer the question, what is the effect of pH level on the growth of seeds of... Metha Peperita and Helianthus Anus. By answering this question, it allows me to fully understand how pH level works in the facts. Here, okay, this is good. He's telling me what is exactly his lab in the end. But again, remember that he's using two names of plants here that are not in italics. And again, he is not explaining a little bit more of pH through his entire paragraph. So his background was very generalized. So he did not much talk about the plants. He did not talk much about the pH mechanism and how the plant is affected. Okay, and that is the extremely important thing. He spent a lot of time talking about his personal section. So that's why his background is very weak. Now, let's look at the background of somebody that got a seven. In this case, he's talking about an enzyme. Look, enzymes are biological catalysts that increase the rate at which reactions occur by providing them with a different way at lower activation energy. Look at this. He's already defining what enzyme is, biological formation that is important. He also puts citations in there, which didn't see in the first one. So that's communication points right there. They are most affected at specific temperature range and are always used in their own optimal capacity. Again, enzymes are often immobilized, then da 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 for the use of industrial process. Again, cited. While they are widely used in the food industry for the making of lactose milk, for example, enzymes are omnipresent ingredients of all their lives in long-term detergents. And you can see that he continues explaining how it works with citations. Look at this. That was his first paragraph talking about enzymes. Very well done. Second one, controlling nearly 6% of the USD 5.3 billion market, Procter & Gamble. Now he's talking about Procter & Gamble. What is he going to talk about? He's definitely going to talk about the detergent brand. So now he's talking about detergent because that's the thing that he's going to use in his lab. So he's explaining more about that detergent. And he's talking about the main products here. What are the enzymes located in that product and how it works? And again, this is where he talked, he did a quote in here, the easy availability of purified soybean MLAs and modulation matrices are low cost. So he's basically saying what is the components that makes this detergent that he's going to use. So you notice the first paragraph is about the enzyme. The second is what kind of product he's using, the detergent. So he's talking about that. He continues, this is from the other part, there was a citation, and then the enzyme mobilized is also stable and fully functional, pH range to closer. And again, he's explaining about immobilized enzymes, very clear. Then the next paragraph, he's talking about the fatty acids because that's what the enzymes are gonna break. So now he has a paragraph talking about it. Fatty acids, how they deal with the surfactants in the specific type of detergent, and how here, for example, lipase can hydrolyze fat by cleaving the ester bond. So he's explaining the mechanism of the enzyme, how he's breaking that fat. And he goes on and talks about it. Then he talks about the carb, because also that's one of the breaking downs that he's doing. He's also talking about the carb on hands, and he talks about what is he going to do. He's going to measure the way using calorimetry. So now he's explaining the equipment that he's using for that, and he explained what calorimetric is and why he's doing this selection of this device. And he's explaining how it works all over here. And again, more information explaining in detail. Look at that. So he talked about enzymes, he talked about lipids and carbs, then talk about the equipment, color how this work. And eventually he gets to the point where he talks why he's doing this lab and the whole purpose. As you can see, uh, I have been exposed to many detergents. So it's explaining what's the reason for it. And eventually he's going to be talking about how this is important for whatever he's doing. So this is an example of showing a strong background compared to a weak one. So the key rule here for background, three or four maximum paragraphs. You, whatever it is, 
Make sure that one paragraph is about your independent. The second one is about your dependent. The third one is about equipments that need to be explained if necessarily. And if there's a fourth one, you tell me what you experiment while you're doing it. That's simple. Get straight to the point. On the next video, we're going to talk about the hypothesis, how to write a hypothesis that is very strong. And for that, remember with Naomi, you can get that seven. And I see you on the next video.